The AT Sunreef Power Eco is one of the world's first solar powered supercats, and today we're going to show you every single inch of it, explain how it works, and take it out for a sea trial. But before we get to that, let me give you a quick rundown of how it works. As the name suggests, it's an 80 foot twin hulled catamaran that would normally be powered by a pair of big diesel engines. This Eco version, however, is powered by much smaller electric motors, equivalent to about 250 horsepower each. The electricity needed to drive these comes from three different power sources. A lithium ion battery pack, an extensive array of solar panels, and two small diesel range extenders. Together, these give it a theoretically limitless cruising range to back up its Category A RCD rating. But it's those solar panels that are the really clever bit, because rather than being bolted onto the boat, they're moulded into the fibreglass. This means they can be fitted to many more surfaces, like the hull sides, superstructure and flybridge overhangs. So wherever the sun is shining, they will always be generating power. In sunny conditions, it should be possible to cruise at three to four knots using solar power alone. But most of the time, you'll need to use a combination of battery and solar power to cruise at seven to eight knots. This should give you around three hours of cruising before you need to fire up the range extenders and recharge the batteries. The rest of the boat is pure sunreef with all the same comforts and luxuries you'd expect from this semi-custom Polish yard. Right, that's how it all works. Now let's take a closer look at the boat itself. Let's start with a little look at the stern of the Sunreef 80 Power Eco. See, we've got a huge drop-down hydraulic platform that swings down from underneath there. You can see massive struts that lower that whole thing into the sea, and that, of course, can carry the tender too. And then we've got these really wide staircase, beautifully glowing teak wooden steps up onto the cockpit area. And you can really feel the width of this boat here. Absolutely enormous. Some pad area that obviously flips up to become seats in the cockpit. But first, let's have a little tour of the decks to get a feel of the scale of it. Now look how wide these side decks are. Absolutely huge. Just give you a little look at me. I'm absolutely dwarfed by the size of this. It's just so wide. I can just about touch both sides of it. But here you can see some of those solar panels integrated onto the side of it. So everywhere along the yacht, it's picking up reflected sun from the surface of the sea or direct sun from overhead. But lovely wide decks leading up to this four deck area. And again, look at the size of this. Absolutely tremendous. Huge spread of sun pads all across this bow area here. There's big lockers either side. They've taken the cushions off here so they can put lines and fenders in them. But just look at the width of that. This is obviously the jacuzzi hot tub area. I like the way they've got a glass wall on one side. But what a spot to have a bit of a relax in a hot tub looking over the front of a yacht like this. Now we can go back down the side deck. Again, more of these solar panels integrated into the actual gel coat of the molding. Really tall, solid stainless steel grab rails everywhere we go. And now let's go and have a quick look up at the flybridge. Attractive kind of curved staircase leading up to the flybridge. Again, really nice and wide, easy to make your way up. And then almost square shaped flybridge. It is absolutely as wide as it is long. It's a really unusual feeling. You're so used to long, thin flybridges and this is a wide square one. Monster size dining table. You can see a couple of people sat at that. They're almost lost at it. You can get three or four seats along either side. And then a really big outdoor galley. You can see there's a bar section here with stools tucked against that. That looks like it can probably be backlit marble. It's not illuminated at the moment. Twin barbecues on this side. Kenyan electric grills. 
big sink under there. Almost certainly fridges and freezers, ice makers under there. Exactly as expected. And all protected by this great big hard top overhead. Stylish teak lined lining on it. And space to spare. There's just so much room to move around on board. Here's the helm station. Again, looks almost a little bit lost, but space for at least 10 people to sit along that bench if they wanted to. Got the captain preparing, hopefully, for a sea trial. But we'll see if we manage to get underway. And then in this aft starboard corner, there's a small gym area. So we've got a running machine here, got a rowing machine, weights. And that's the beauty of having so much space on board. You can configure it exactly how you want. You can put bits of furniture, you can put gyms, you can put seating, sun pads, freestanding sun loungers, whatever you like. And then if we drop down onto the main deck, have a bit of a look inside. And now moving into the saloon, look at the size of that opening, all those sliding doors tucked neatly away behind that bulkhead there and you're left with this monster opening, really blurring the lines between inside and outside space. And much like the flybridge upstairs, it's almost square in shape. But I do like the way they've sort of zoned it into separate areas. So there's the lounge seating area in the middle here. We've got a bit of alarm going off at the moment, so apologies for that screeching away in the background. Dining area forward, all in this very white cream light effect. Lots of, sort of brushed gold effect. Backlit bar area, cream stools. This is not the main galley. This is literally a bar sort of serving area for the guests. Looks like there might well be a TV under there. I'm not quite sure if I can pop that up. Have a quick peek at some of the... Oh, they're all locked in place, I think, so I'm not sure I can open those at the moment. We're all set to go to sea. But you can see we've got hydro tap in there. We've got ice maker there. Gold sink and taps. Lots more storage behind these, I suspect. There we go. But so much room on board. Storage all the way around it. Over here, we've got a couple of wine coolers. Lots more storage all around the dining table. Nothing particularly interesting in there at the moment. And then you have got this access out onto the foredeck from here too. So see, electric switch that swings open and there you've got access direct to the foredeck from here. Now there is an inside helm station too so if you're not up at that flybridge one if the weather's not particularly clement you can tuck yourself away in here you've got all the same controls everything you need to maneuver in and out of your berth as well as cruise along at sea and this does have a transoceanic range if you use the range extender so you could be there for some time and encounter all kinds of different weather but let's carry on with the tour drop down into the starboard hull and if we go backwards to start with the bed is facing out across the beam of the boat through that huge hull window over there very smart desk area TV rises up from inside there. Big ensuite bathroom, sliding door again, automatic lights. I don't know if we can flick that on. There we go. Big shower compartment, more of this lovely veined white marble. Beautifully done. Don't want to leave the lights on any longer than necessary. 
on board an electric boat. And then if we come forward from here, again, I might just switch that light off. We'll go off in a second. And then through into the forward cabin. Again, we'll have to flip the lights on. There we go. Another bed across the beam of the boat facing out through those hull windows. This time we've got three vertical hull windows and a little opening section there. Again, ensuite bathroom through here. <coughs> oh, flick the lights on. Big walk-in shower with an overhead shower head. More of that stylish sort of matte gold effect. Lights off again. Turn the lights off. Call that. I'm just going to close that door. Turn the lights off there too. And then move across to the port side and we can have a look down here. Very similar cabin on this side. So this is the third of the cabins we've seen. Again, probably a mirror image by the looks of things. We've got another bathroom through there, another bed facing out through the window, big wardrobe, lights up automatically when you open that. And the fourth cabin in here. Now this is a bit unusual. This has been kitted out as double bunk bed. So you've got two on this side, two on this side. You get four children in there. And in fact, they do have their own bathroom too. Flick the lights on, oh, wrong one, there we go. So it may be a four berth children's cabin, but they still get a very luxurious bathroom. Lucky them. And then back up, it still hasn't finished yet. We have another cabin over in this corner. I can just pop that open. You can see we've got quite steep steps down, alternate steps. And then pretty decent twin cabin down here too. It could be berth, it could be guests or crew, but it's absolutely kitted out smartly as any of them. This is in fact a wet room rather than a separate shower compartment. So you see you pull the shower head out from there and it will attach onto that bar there. And I think we are underway. And lastly, drop down into the porthole. And this is the galley area, so very much a crude space. You can see there is a dumb waiter. You can send food up to the decks. Ovens have got hull windows too. Small mess area in the corner for the crew. And a big American style fridge freezer. Impressive amount of storage space. Right, let's get back up on deck and see if we can get underway. So now we've got the sun setting on our starboard side, I wanted to talk you through a little bit about the how the Sunreef 80 Power Eco actually works. Now you can see above me here, there are a whole load of solar panels integrated into this, uh, the, the top of the saloon 
roof effectively. So you've got solar panels on here, you've got solar panels on the hard top right up there, and we've got solar panels integrated into the hull sides. And so whatever angle the sun is at, you're always picking up a certain amount of either reflected or direct sunlight. Now it's powered by twin 200 kilowatt engines or motors, electric motors. So the whole propulsion system is electric. There is a diesel range extender if you need to use it, but it should have a top speed, well, a cruising speed of around about seven knots, which is using about 60 kilowatts uh, to, to do that speed. It has 440 kilowatt hour battery bank, and that should give it a range of around about four hours cruising at seven knots using the battery power alone. But the beauty of having all these integrated solar panels is that if you slow it down to three or four knots, it is effectively a limitless range because it is then producing sufficient power from the solar panels alone to propel the boat at that speed. We'll have a little look at the controls. So fairly conventional looking throttles. There's no neutral as such, because there is no gearbox, but it, there's a little, okay, so it still has a little click to show you. But when we're looking at here, we've got that's battery power remaining. We've got RPM, just as you would as normal, but instead of fuel consumption in terms of liters per hour, we've got kilowatt usage. So you can see on each motor exactly what kilowatts you're using. Have we got speed up here at the moment or not? Okay, so we're doing 5.2 eight knots, we're just accelerating a little bit, and we're using around 60 kilowatts per motor. But that's also all the electricity throughout the boat, is it? No. No, so that's motor. literally just the motor, okay. So this is Captain Gavin, who is helming the boat for us today. He's used to driving it. I'd just like to know a little bit, how does it feel different to a conventional diesel-powered boat? Well, it's just too silent, and you don't have that, uh, that genuine response going into gear on a diesel motor. Because um, there is no gear, effectively. Yeah, there's no gear, exactly. Um, so yeah, you, it's something to get used to. Is it? Did you find it a little unnerving at it's first? It's a little unnerving, but uh, fascinating at the same time. So you have to visually check. You have to visually check. You're lucky you've got some green lights yeah. to tell you if you're going forward and red for a bit. So there's no, uh, there's no sort of clunk. There's no obvious yeah, feeling. No you can't feel the vibration. The there's no noise. The immediate movement of yeah. the boat. Yeah. yeah. But it, presumably it is actually very quick in terms of response. There's no delay. There's no difference, really. Yeah. yeah. It's just uh, getting used to it. Yeah. And after years of captaining boats with big diesel engines yeah. where it's a very obvious... You're changing your rhythm yeah. a little. Yeah. 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 But is it, in terms of cruising long at a normal speed, is it very relaxing and quiet? It's, and it's, uh, it actually reminds you of sailing. That same tranquility of sailing, but without the sails. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. But without the hassle of the sails. Without the hassle, exactly. <laughs> And do you have the confidence in the range? Do you ever get sort of range anxiety or do you know you've always got the backup of the range extenders? No, pretty confident, yeah. 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 So you're not constantly watching the battery and thinking, are we going to make it? <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, yeah, the sit-up's great. And, uh... and do you find yourself cruising more slowly to take advantage of the... No, we, we use the optimum cruising speed around seven, eight knots. Right. Um, which is the most economical. Next right. Sense. And that will give you sort of Four, four hours cruising at yeah. very comfortable. And then you fire up the range extenders if you need to, or if you've already got there, you plug it in or... Exactly. Yeah. And is it rather pleasing at anchor? It's then quietly topping up the batteries. Yeah, I mean, uh, you don't necessarily have to put in shore power if yeah. you're on the dock. Uh, run the genie every five days for an hour, and you can live off AC, the galley, and everything. Yeah. That sounds like a very civilized way to go cruising. Exactly. Excellent. Thank you for your help. I'm not quite sure how well this comes across on camera, but it's a really unusual feeling being on an 80-foot catamaran weighing the best part of 100 tonnes, powered purely by electric motors. Normally, you'd feel the vibration underfoot, you'd hear the engines churning away, there'd be a great big wake streaming out the back, but there is absolutely none of that. The only noise you can hear is the water streaming off the hull. There is no noise from the motors at all, no vibration at all. We're just silently cruising along. It's actually quite surprising how much noise the water does make. <laughs> but it is a really very, very 
unusual experience. And actually, the captain was saying that exactly the same thing, that you don't get any of those normal signals. You don't feel the clunk of the gearbox or the vibration of the revs picking up when you put the throttles down. And up here, you really notice how quiet it is. Because here, the only noise is just a little bit of water peeling off the hulls. You can probably see that bow just cleaving its way through the water, just pushing up a tiny little bow wave. But we are cruising along probably at four or five knots. I think we've just taken the speed right down. But what a civilized way to cruise. It would be quite interesting to see how it copes in a really strong head sea or a really lumpy conditions. Maybe you just don't go out in that kind of weather. This is very much about a luxurious cruising experience and why would you go out like that if you didn't need to? But it is really much more like a sailing yacht but without the mast, without the rigging, without the hassle. And that has to be said that that really is quite an agreeable cruising experience. More of those solar panels here, yet more here. Sun setting over the Bay of Cannes. Very nice gentle motion. And just the churn of the sea coming off those twin hulls. Let's have a little look inside at that speed. Just quickly. So let's go down into one of the cabins and see what it sounds like down there. sounds exactly like a sailing boat. Again, you can hear the water lapping against the hulls. You can see us cruising gently along, but no noise, no vibration whatsoever. So this is where all the magic happens. So down there, that tiny little drum-shaped thing is the motor that is driving this enormous great yacht. So it is a 200 kilowatt motor. That is tucked right down there. The shaft runs under these plates here. If we look round on this side, these are all the chargers for the batteries. The batteries are spread throughout the boat. And then under me here is the range extender. Now that is a 250 horsepower diesel powered Yanmar range extender. That's under there. And that then puts power into that DC generator that converts it into the power that then drives the motor and charges the batteries. So really unusual engine room. And the other thing to notice is just how nice and cool it is down here. Normally after a sea trial, this would be a raging furnace and noise and fans and everything. And this is just another silent, busy, but very cool mechanical area. It's not really an engine room at all. It's a a motor vault. A few final details about the cost of this boat. So a standard Sunreef 80 power ends up costing around about 8 million euros ex-tax. Adding the full eco facility with all that solar panels, that battery bank and the electric motors instead of diesel ones adds around about 10 to 12 percent. So best part of a million euros. Now that's a big uplift, but you will get a certain amount of that back through savings on fuel consumption because effectively you're using very little diesel relative to a big higher powered diesel boat. You also have lower maintenance cost because there is very little servicing to do and much smaller range extenders to service rather than big diesel engines. So 
I don't think people are likely to do it because they're going to save money on it, but what they can do is clearly say that they've got a smaller carbon footprint, you're recharging the batteries a lot of the time from the sun alone, but above all you've got that really different, quiet, almost silent cruising experience. And if you like the idea of the kind of sailing ethos, but don't want the hassle of having to have big masts and sails and crew to handle it all, this is one way of going about it. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief sea trial and tour of the Sunreef 80 Power Eco. Really unusual boat, lots to talk about. Do please let me know what you make of it in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Thank you.